Hey, kia ora. Hello, I'm Brahms here. Coming to you live from Sun City in Arizona. Hope you're having a super fantastic sparkling winning Wednesday. I just went to have a drink of water and realized as we're going live that my water bottle's sitting over there on the counter. And I have no liquid here. So we're just going to have to go through this because my voice has been a little cranky today. So um, I'm not sure why. I haven't been using it, but there's been all this allergy dry, drainage from the sinuses. And we all know what happens when drainage from the sinuses occurs. It affects the voice box. So we're just going to be very gentle with the voice and try not to get too excited and and things like that. So, um, so yes, so how has your Winning Wednesday been? Winning Wednesday, we celebrate the wins. No matter what they are, we celebrate them, whether they're little wins, whether they're big wins. And we celebrate in accordance to the size of the win. Was it a little win? Yes, we celebrate it with a little win. A little reward. If it's a big win, we celebrate it with a big reward. Um, so always make your win, your celebration of your wins in proportion to what it is that you won at. Um, so it's been a really good day. I have my account. I I have had a very full day. A very full day. It has been a very busy day on the chat. It's probably one of the busiest days I've had in a while. But um, yes, lots of lots of spreadsheets being uploaded. Um, and other questions was like that's interesting we're starting to get those questions coming through but anyway um what am i looking at oh yes i have my accountability call this one i love my accountability call and i especially love my accountability call the morning after i have done a call with my mentor from the night but um with my mentor because what happens that when i get on that accountability call and i'm like telling her about these things and she's okay what are your goals for this week? And I turn around and says, okay, well, I'm going to do this, 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 da, 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 and I start rattling off this list, and I'm busy writing down this list as I go. Or I might, if I have the time before the call, I actually write the list out before the call as to what my goals are going to be for the following week. And uh, so I always love having an accountability call after a call with my mentor the night before because I'm fired up from that call, which means I can now get these goals down, I can get them done, I can win at those, Yes! And um, so on my massive mind map of my view of my corporation, we're calling it a corporation because this is a corporation that's going to have several different divisions underneath it, all different types of things. You guys are going to start seeing a lot of that coming through on the lives as we start to get ready to, um, we're going to reignite some areas, we're going to be starting some new areas. So as that starts coming to fruition, you're going to get the... Um, um, the previews of what's coming and the question that we have for this month which is where are some places let me remember what I have written down there where are some places you have vacation during your lifetime so far so I want you to start thinking and then ask for any favorites I want you to start thinking about that because we're going to be bringing back completely we're revamping and revising something that we had before we had started before the global pause happened two years ago um, it's been revamped it's renewed it's um, it's still a work in progress um, but we're going to be starting to bring back those once in a lifetime trips that will never be repeated so even if we go back to the same destination we're going to be going back with a completely different itinerary some of the itineraries will be a little similar like if we're doing a cruise for example, if we're doing a cruise to, um, say, through the Panama Canal, that'll be whatever the itinerary is on the cruise line. Now, we could change it up by doing it on a different cruise line that has a different, that has a similar but different itinerary. And we would also be changing up what we do before and after the cruise as well. So we're going to start bringing back our Before the Dirt Nap adventures. And I can't wait. I am super excited. My idea, my... Um, after my call last night, my pen was flying around the paper doing mind maps and everything else for that. Um, and so we're going to start looking at that. There's going to be land tours that'll be unique. And there will also be cruises. And then there'll be a combination of both. And they will be once in a lifetime opportunities, itineraries never to be repeated. So we will make some changes where we can, especially on cruises. We'll make changes to the before program and the after program of the cruise. Um, especially if we can't find a different itinerary on a different cruise line. 
So yes, yeah, so we're going for those once in a lifetime vacations. Um, and, we're, and we're working with the theme of, hang on, what did I write that down? Living your best life now. Um, I was approaching this from a completely different angle and my mentor said, you know, I'm like thinking of it as your best life now. You know, live your best life now before the dirt nap. And I'm like, and afterwards I was like thinking about it, I really like that approach. So we're, that's what we're going to be doing. You'll learn more about um, RVing and living in an RV full time. Um, oh, I got to, oh, I got to figure out how to do Yeah, I'm going to do a video later on, probably tomorrow. Probably a bit late to do it now. I don't know. But I got this really cool cover for my car for the outside that completely, and it's on the outside of the vehicle because it completely covers the windshield and goes over most of the passenger window. Um, it doesn't take long to hook it up, but it's long enough that when I look at it, do I really want to hop in the car and go for one of those spur of the moment drives? Because after I've been walking with Zephy and stuff, I'm like walking back and I'm like, what am I going to do for dinner? What am I going to do for dinner? And I may have stuff planned out and then I sort of like get there and we get in the car and see the car there. And Zephy will go and stand by the car and I'm like, oh, you want to go for a ride? Okay. So I put her in the car because she goes and stands next to it. And then we hop in the car and we go for a ride. And we usually end up going through a fast food place. And so this when i put it when i put it on for the first time you said i thought okay this is not going to take long to put on and pull off when i have to to put on once i use the car or to um take it off when i'm using the car but then it was sort of like oh but now i'm gonna have to fold it so i can put it in the you know i can put it into the trunk of the car no problem at all but i may want to like fold it down a little bit and that sort of thing and i'm like oh that's gonna be such a pain to do that uh, so, <laughs> so it is now curbing those um like, you know, those impulse drives, impulse drives. That was the word we came up this morning when I was talking with my mentor, um, with my accountability coach. It was impulse driving. So we're going to be curbing the impulse driving because we have this cover on the front. And it's not just a case of um, like the one in the windscreen where you just unpop it, unfold it, put it up against the windscreen, where you go. Because the idea behind this is, and I have learned this living in the RV, is that when the sun is coming in the windows, it's heating up the glass the glass is amplifying the heat into the RV. So what you do is you put something on the outside to stop the windows heating up so much, so therefore it's not radiating as much heat into the RV and it help, helps keep it cooler. So thinking on that, I thought maybe we can do the same with the car. So I had a look and there's all these different snow covers that you can get that just go over the, wind, the windshield. And I thought, no, I want the side windows because in late afternoon, like about now, it will be streaming in through the driver's window and heating up the steering wheel and all that sort of stuff and so I had a look around and I found one that actually went across the windshield and down it's supposed to cover the passenger windows and it's designed for this size is designed for a sedan or a small SUV and um, so I was looking at looking at the measurements going yep that that'll fit um, and so I got it but it only goes halfway it goes about halfway or three quarters of the way along the passenger windows and the on the side windows um, for the passenger and the driver and um, but this is the cool part about it is if you put the black side out that is for the snow so the sun will heat it up during the day and it, it's harder for the snow to stick and then if you want to reflect the heat you turn it the other way which is the silver side and it reflects the heat out so um i'm curious to i am curious to go see how it how it happened how that worked today whether it was as hot in there um, but we actually have a hundred degrees coming up on one of the days this week. We're slowly going up in the 90s this week. Um, I want to say it's like Friday or Saturday. But Saturday I'm staying inside. I got I got work to do. Oh no, we've got an air quality alert. Great. Um, <laughs> which means it's going to be fun trying to breathe outside. Friday is meant to be 199 on Saturday. So we will definitely go test the vehicle test the inside temperature later on to see if it's as hot as it normally is whether that was on or not or whether it is slightly cooler because that's on we know it won't be cool cool uh, a lot cooler but um let's see oh it started at 9 24 this morning through to nine o'clock tomorrow night we're ozone high pollution advisories for the area great that means it sucks to go outside and breathe in it 
Yeah, Miss, we're, we're, we're not going to want to go outside and breathe, but I've got to take a puppy for a walk. So I will be putting on my um, on my breathe. This is a um, this is all essential oils. It's a vapor stick, so it kind of smells a bit like Vicks, but it's made with essential oils. And basically what I do with it is I get the stick and I get just a little bit on the fingers and just a little bit under each nostril. So when I'm breathing in, I'm breathing in the vapors of this and not so much the pollution coming in. So, it's supposed, so I'm thinking it stops the pollution, but I definitely breathe easier on that. And then they also, and um, this is with doTERRA, and they also have um, the suckers, the, the lozenges, the breathe lozenges as well. So I'm, so I do that. So I'm all gooped up now for the, for walking outside. It's just a little bit on the end of the finger and just a little bit under each nostril at the entrance. I'm um, already tasting, kind of tasting it in the mouth. It's kind of cool. I love this stuff. Um, and then I will get the breathe lozenges and I'll be sucking on one of those while we take our walk this evening. Anything to help me breathe easier when outside in this, in these types of conditions with high pollen, um, you know, where the allergy things are high with the dust and the dander and the greed and the grass weed and the pollen and blah, 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 blah. And now we've got the ozone pollution on top of that. So um, hopefully we'll be breathing easier. But I find that that combination works very well when we go out walking. Um, how the heck did I get on all of this? <laughs> so, um, so yes, yeah, so we're going to test the car temperature on Friday and Saturday to see how it is. And I'll probably just like open the back doors and go in because to open the front, actually, I don't think I can, because it's got an elastic band that comes down at the front to hook onto the front wheels. Then it's got an elastic band that goes from the top corner all the way down across the passengers, the back doors and hooks on the back wheels. So I'm going to have to undo those in order to test out the temperature inside. So yeah, it was kind of funny because I left my glasses on the front passenger seat and I was about to hook up the last elastic band from the top corner to the rear wheel. But, oh, I better get my glasses out. I couldn't open the front door far enough to reach in and get my glasses. So I had to go to the back and rather than try and undo everything, I went into the back door behind the passenger seat, reached down on the front seat and got the lever to push the seat, to um, tip the seat back grab my glasses and then put the seat back upright again so I was like okay next time we have to remember anything on the front seat gets locked in um in those situations <laughs> so, <laughs> and there's been a bit of wind today and it's held in place beautifully so I looked out the window earlier when I was pulling in the awning and it was holding beautifully it was just flapping a little bit on the top but otherwise it looked pretty good so um yeah, so you're going to be seeing lots of hints and tips coming through on different things, on RVing, on oil, essential oils, on um, walking dog. Did you see my photo on, on Facebook last night? Oh my gosh, there's a photo there of Zephy's bed. Now, she usually sleeps on that bed during the day as she looks out the window and sees what's going on in the neighborhood. And right now, she's got a lot of entertainment across the street because across the street, there's a park bottle there. They're completely re renovating the entire thing these people have decided to live there year round because of um have decided to live there year round and so they are um basically making the place livable for them during the high temperatures so they've put in they've taken out some of the windows they've put in some new windows um all the skirting got taken off today there's a whole bunch of stuff going on inside there's appliances sitting out in their carport so i'm not sure if they're the old ones or the new ones Actually, I think they might be the old ones. So they've already got new appliances inside. Um, but they're like um, redoing all the windows with either a double or a triple layer, whatever it is. Um, they've replaced the doors that have got the blinds on the inside between the glass. So they don't have to worry about the blinds being inside. Um, they're doing a lot of work. And I'm actually wondering if, because they started stripping off some of the uh, some of the siding today too. So I'm wondering if they're getting ready, ready to, um, if they're going to strip off all the siding and put stucco on the park models because apparently here in um in arizona if you do the stucco it is a lot more energy efficient on these park models than just the regular um sightings that they have um so yeah they're doing a lot of work over there and zephy's like up there in the morning and she's watching all the workmen arrive and and then she's up there during different points of the day to see what they're doing especially if they're working outside and making noise she's like, like what noise is going on um, and she's just been up there watching, but there's nothing going on out there right now. She's waiting for her. Um, so, yeah, so it's, it's a lot of entertainment out there for her these um, last couple of weeks as they're getting all of the stuff done and ready and uh, 
yeah, it's it was very loud and very noisy. And in the mornings, it's nice and cool outside, so I like to have the door open and open up the side windows and things. So we've got the cross breeze going before I have to put the ACs on. And uh, the problem with doing that is that I'm on my morning meeting at eight o'clock in the morning, which is on a Zoom. And all of a sudden, they start up the sander, they start up this electrical tool or that electrical tool, the circular saw. Or they start this morning. They started banging out the skirting. And I was all like, oh, really? You're doing this at this hour of the morning. Okay, whatever. We'll just deal with it. <laughs> so, um, so yes, there's lots of stuff going on and around. So um, start thinking about places that you want to go. What, what, if you, if you, you know, you want to live your best life now, what are some places you want to travel to? What are some experiences you want to have? It's not so much traveling to a place. Some people want to travel to a place to experience the culture. What experiences do you want to have? Um, like for me, for example, you know, I've always been sort of like, I am not going to be stupid enough to jump off a bridge with a piece of elastic tied around my ankles. And But I've always added the caveat on the end that if I ever was stupid enough to jump off a building or a um, structure with, a, with an elastic band around my ankles, there's only one place in the entire world that I will do that. Um, and so I keep saying that next time I'm going to New Zealand down the South Island, I'm going to do it. But I haven't been down to the South Island in a few years, so... I haven't been able to do that because there's only one place in the world I will do that. So what is something that you want to experience? You know, some people want to go to New Zealand and experience the movie sites, go to the movie sites um, for like Lord of the Rings and Hobbit, plus all the other movies. I don't think people realize just how many movies have been made in New Zealand. Um, you know, we've got, we've got incredible scenery and there are so many movies that have been made in New Zealand that people don't realize, um, you know, like um, The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe during the battle scenes that was all filmed in New Zealand um there was um Prince Caspian was, was it Prince yeah Prince Caspian was filmed parts of it was filmed down there um the X-Men Wolverine was um, parts of that was filmed down there um and so when you go down to some of the areas and you're doing the Lord of the Rings movie tours and stuff they actually tell you about the other movies that were also filmed in those locations as well so there's a huge list of places that have been um around New Zealand that have been used in different movies over time over the years and things so um it's quite surprising um but what experiences do you want to have you know could it be that you want to go on a trip in the foots of your ancestors and go back to the homelands that your ancestors came from and explore the villages and the towns or the cities where they where your ancestors came from where they started off or where they were born um, maybe the house that that parents or grandparents were born in is still up you can go, you know, see the outside of that. Maybe there's relatives in the local cemeteries that you want to go visit their grave sites so you can get more information about them. Um, maybe it's one you want to go to those areas and you want to learn the history um, of that area, and particularly in the time when your um, ancestors were alive, what happened in that area, what may have caused them to leave that area and immigrate somewhere else. Um, so is that something that you want to do? Um, you know, do you want to go mountain climbing? Um, do you want to go visit Machu Picchu? Um, do you want to go to the Galapagos? You know, what sort of experience, what sort of experiences, everybody's about experiences these days, not so much the sightseeing, which is kind of cool. Um, so what experiences do you want to have? Start thinking about things like that, especially with this month's question, you know, about the places that you're vacationed to in your lifetime. Do you have any favorites? Maybe you want to go back to some of those favorites. Maybe you want to try something new or something similar. Um, I know I want to go back to Melbourne. It's been a few years since I was last in Melbourne. And I absolutely love the city, but now they have there's all these alleyways and stuff that I used to go walking down. Now they've got little cafes and these little crafty stores that are that are inside these alleys that I used to go walking down. And I was like, I'd love to go back and experience that. Um, you know, sit out there in the, in the middle of this, in this alley and have a cup of coffee, but I don't drink coffee, so it'll be hot chocolate or a cup of tea. Um, you know, things like that. And go just to go back and re-experience the city because it was such an amazing place when I was first there. Um, I want to go back and see what's changed since I was last there, which would have been 93, I think it was. Yeah, like 1993, 94, somewhere around there when I was last in Melbourne in Australia. Um, and I was there for three weeks and they had this one, there was this one hotel that I was in and the hotel's still there, but I think it's now apartments. Um, and it was within walking distance of five different theatres. Um, you'd walk out the door and there was the back of one theatre there, you go down the street, down, down to the street before you crossed over into Chinatown there was a theater next to you and there was one directly across next to the entrance to Chinatown then there was another one around and then there was another one hang on, 
another one that way and then behind behind the hotel where I was and there was a fifth one what was the fifth one so there was five of, five of them within walking within a block um but I did go and see Blood Brothers when I was there in Melbourne and that was pretty cool and like some of the actors come out on stage and I'm like I know them from TV I know them from the you know whatever show it was on at the time that was a popular Australian show in New Zealand um I was like oh I know them from TV, so you got to see them on stage. Then the next day when I was telling people I'd been there, they go, well, did you go into the bar of the theatre afterwards? I went, no, I just went back to the hotel to go to bed because it was 10.30 at night and I had to be at work at 5 a.m. Um, and they says, oh, if you've gone in the bar, the actors come out into the bar and interact with the audience. And I'm like, huh, would it be nice to have done that before I went? <laughs> so that is something that I learned that time. Whether it's still in place or not, I don't know. So it would be cool to go back and, um, and just you know just absorb the energy um after a play has been done um i remember at the palmerston north opera house um the actors didn't come down to interact with the audience but you could see them up in the dressing room their dressing rooms were up on like the second or third floor or something of the thing and after seeing half a sixpence um the music half a sixpence we're walking down the alley behind it goes to the car park in the back and we hear these voices and we looked up and it was a couple of the actors um and one of them, I think, was actually in the shower because he, he was shirtless. All you could see was from, like, waist up. Um, he said, oh, well, you toss me this up. And, and they're going backwards and forwards and bantering about why he would need soap. And so I don't think he was actually in the shower at that point. I think he was re getting ready to go into the shower. Um, but they had this bantering thing going backwards and forwards. And um, so whenever we walked down that alleyway after any musical that, or play that we had been to see, we'd be looking at the windows to see which ones had lights on. Did they have the window open? Um, and if they had the window open, there's quite often some sort of dialogue going on um, between the actors and things to provide you with an, a, the show after the show type of thing. And it was very entertaining. I remember those. So what sort of things do you want to experience? Do you want to experience um, a Broadway musical or a Broadway play? Do you want to go to West End in London and experience the same thing over there? Um, you know, do you want to travel the world and go to different theatres and different places and see different things? Um, like the ballet in one place, an art museum in a different place. Um, you know, what sort of experiences do you want? So start thinking about those because we're going to be rebooting um, Before the Dirt Nap Adventures very soon. And they will all be about living your best life now, going and seeing these experiences now um, rather than waiting. Because, um, you you know, life, you're not, guar you know, you're not guaranteed tomorrow. If you wake up tomorrow, that's a good sign. Um, that your purpose here is not yet done, but you never know. It could be your last day on earth. You never know when it's going to come. You do not know when your time is going to come. Um, so, um, so you know, why not live your best life now? And if you've ever heard of Miss Norma, oh my gosh, um, Miss Norma was this ninety was she ninety two? Her husband had just passed, and. Within a very short time after her husband passed, I want to say it was a week after he passed, but I'm not exactly sure. I know it was within a very short time period after he passed. She was diagnosed with um, it was either ovarian or uterine cancer. It was a woman's part cancer. That's all I can tell you. Um, and uh, so they're talking about, it, and the oncologist talking about all the treatments and everything else. And she looked at him and went, "I'm not doing it." And the person goes, "What do you mean?" She says, "I'm going to go with my son and his wife, and we're going to go and tour America in their RV." And he's like, okay. I mean, she was 90, 92, 93. She had 18 months with her son and daughter-in-law and their poodle um, driving around the States and visiting places and things. And people were following her on Facebook. She had this Facebook page set up. I think it was called Driving Miss Norma is the name of the Facebook group. And there's all the, there will be all these stories about her and where they were heading to next. And places were offering for her to have these different experiences and stuff and setting her up um, to have some of these experiences that she wanted to do like hot air ballooning and um, it was just a real and there's now a book about it and uh, it was just a really it was very cool to watch her travels around I think she I think she was like 18 months after her diagnosis before she passed but they packed a lot into that 18 months a lot of stuff was packed into that 18 months um but just reading about their stories every day so like, man um i think that might have helped me a little bit with um deciding to go into the rv i don't know i know that it had always been a dream of brad's and mine to have an rv and to go tripping around well not so much living in it full time but just going on these extended 
extended vacations in the RV. And um, we wanted an RV that was, of course, big enough for Brad because he was six foot five. So we had to make sure that the, sh and so when we went looking at RVs, we had to make sure the shower was big enough for him to be able to get in and have a shower. Um, most of the time you get into the showers and his head would be like this and the shower head would hit his chest <laughs> and he had no room to bend down to get his head underneath the shower head and some of them had fixed shower heads so he couldn't even take them off to like lift them up to where he needed them to be um it was actually quite funny watching him but he liked the ones that had like a skylight in the shower um because he was able to stand up at full height but again the shower head was hitting him at the chest but some of those had removable shower heads so he was okay with that um so yeah that was always a that was always a fun experience to go looking with rvs with brad um, and of course we had to make sure they had a king size bed in them and um that wasn't a very common thing back then when we were looking a little more common now mostly most um rvs have the queen in them um but they're starting to get and starting to see more kings coming out which is nice um i'm fine with the queen because it's just zephy and i on that bed um but yeah if it was brad it would have to be a king and so we already had worked out that these were the this is these were the must-haves based on brad's height and size that we had to have um and of course without brad i got to be a little more lenient on those ones but one thing that never changed from when brad and i were looking to when i was looking by myself was that it had to have a fixed bed not one that had to be folded up in order for the slide to come in i had to be able to be able to access the bedroom while driving well not while driving while traveling when we we're in a rest area if i decided i wanted to go and lay down and have a nap I had to be able, I have to be able to access the bed. That is a non-negotiable. And they tried showing me, and then as soon as I walk in, I go, this bed is not going to fit when they pull this. Oh, no, you got to sit there. I said, no. I said, non-negotiable. I said, that is a deal breaker. If there is not a fixed bed that can be accessed, fully accessed, um, while I'm traveling, so when I go into a restaurant, I want to take a nap, I want to go lay down on the bed, and if I can't get to the bed because it's been folded up or anything else, or it's covered up or whatever because the slides had to come in, it's a no-go. I said, so don't even show me anything that is not does not have the fixed bed that can be accessed when the slides are in. And they're like, oh, you're serious about that? I said, absolutely. I said, if it's got any other sort of bed, I'm not interested. Not interested at all. <laughs> so it's like, ah. Oh. Now, my bed on this one, the bottom the six inches at the foot of the bed actually gets tucked underneath the cabinet and that's okay because i'm only five foot four and my bed is 80 inches long um so that's perfectly fine for me because i can access the bed um when we pull into a rest area i can go and access the bed and um, although with zephy's crate on there it's a little difficult but i can lay across the bed you know the, the width of the bed is 60 inches and on what five foot four so that's 60 64 inches long so my feet have to hang off the other side that's okay I have done that and that's not a problem and Zephy still had room to come up she actually laid on top of her crate because it was padded with because we wrapped it up in a in a um, comforter although now um, if we get the renovations done on the RV before we next go tripping we're not even going to have to fold up her crate which means we will have full access to the bed um, except for where the computer is going to go mm. oh, no, the computer will be able to go down the side of the bed um, once we put the slide and we can then put the computer down the slide at this the, the on the end of the rv um between this the, uh, the bed and the wall there'll be room there for it there so we will have full access to the bed at that point except for the bottom six inches which is perfectly fine because we still have space um but anyway all right time for me to head out of here so start thinking about you know living your best life now um what experiences do you want to have in your lifetime and uh let's 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 get going it's gonna be fun um all right we're about to, about to sign off she's already over here and i haven't even signed off yet so go out have a super fantastic sparkling evening start thinking about living your best life now what is it you want to do what is it you want to experience and let's get moving with it have a super fantastic sparkling evening we'll catch you guys back here tomorrow for thankful thursday yay hey